and then after I tried to move back home I got kicked out again and I started going through hostels and everything and Kira helped me with like finding hostels and stuff like that and then she used to come to the school every two, three weeks to um, come and just work out plans and stuff like that just trying to get pay for stuff because the school didn't think that I was going to be there for very long too but then I went kind of AWOL and disappeared and was going lots and lots of different places and I was quite into the drugs and just didn't really care but I still had Kira ringing me like every day and I was like I don't know everything just kind of rushed around me I wasn't really in touch with reality but I think that was a lot to do with the drugs as well. I would say I'm one of the main supports that she's had that's been consistent over that time. Um, she's, even though she's gone through phases where she's gone, I can't do this anymore and disappeared for a while, she's always come back. Um, so that's something that's really, <laughs> we've always had that strong relationship. It's kind of on like, it was like I was kind of on like the point of a pyramid or something and I was either tipping forward or backwards. And I think I would have slipped backwards because I, if I didn't have someone there pushing me and Someone that I could call and be like, you know, I want to do better. She's kind of like been the main constant thing in my life over the last two years. Someone that I can actually really rely on. She's like just being in and out of home and just never really having that constant thing at all. Like even just somewhere you're staying or not being able to trust anyone. I don't think I'd be here. Yeah, like I actually think that I'd be on the street. Last night in Western Australia, there were too many people like Kelly. Young, alone, and homeless. They slept in hostels, on friends' couches, or on the streets. Some of them were escaping violence, sexual abuse, or drug abuse in the family. Others were kicked out. All of them have a unique story, but these stories often go untold. In this film, a handful of the young people who go homeless every night in WA will share their stories. They will share their challenges and their successes. Importantly, They'll tell of their support by youth workers, whose tireless efforts are often unnoticed and unappreciated. It's not good living on the streets. Why? Oh, like, you can get, like, bashed up on the Strikes and stuff like that. I didn't really sleep that much. I just, I knew if I went to sleep, there's a 50 50 chance that I might get bashed or I might not wake up alive. And there's a 50 50 chance that I might not get bashed or I might, I will wake up alive. I just walked around the streets. If I could find somewhere to sleep where I knew it was safe, I'd sleep there for the night, head off in the next morning. And then I'd, sometimes I might ring up my mates, stay over their house for a couple of days and then go somewhere else. I don't, I don't know what happened, but you know, like my family just, it felt like they disowned me and now it's just hard. I felt like I was ready to kill someone. And then that's when I got locked up that night because I was pretty pissed off that my dad had kicked me out and then he passed shit onto my nan and pop and I thought I was, I was ready to lose it and then I bashed someone and I got charged for it. It's a Tuesday afternoon and the big issue street soccer team is training. This soccer team is a bit different. Its players have suffered drug abuse, homelessness and significant mental health issues, among other things. And it's not just a game. Big Issue offers support around challenges they face in their everyday lives. They've gotten jobs, housing, drug and alcohol support and family support. They were keen to share with us their experiences of homelessness. I was actually homeless for about a week or two. That's because I got kicked out of the youth hostel and after that I just went from youth, ho youth hostel to youth hostel to youth hostel and then into foster care and to another house. Hell, pretty much hell every single day. I absolutely hated it. I, I actually, um, this may sound be a little bit harsh for some people to hear, but I actually had suicide thoughts like I honestly thought of killing myself when I was in that hostel just because that's how much of a hell it was. Well I was on the streets for like two, three months. It's probably not the best 
probably not the best thing. Like it's really, really messed up. Just hated it. Just going in and out of people's houses that I didn't even know. DCP hostels. Went through it all. It's just not something that you really want to experience. I used to fight with my parents all the time, so then they kept telling me that I couldn't go see my friends and that, so I just did it anyway, and they ended up by kicking me out, so then I just, yeah, I had to go my own way. Yeah, I left in when I was in year eight. Year eight? Yeah. That's young. Yeah, I was only like 13. And why did you leave school? Because I had nowhere to go, and like rocking up to school all dirty and that was kind of embarrassing, so I just left school. So you were homeless from the age of 13? Yeah. Now I'm doing really well. I have everything I got, like I live with my cousin now, which is really good. I go to school. So when young people first come in, um, they have an assessment in the office. Um, if you want to come this way. Uh, so we just assess, assess young people and their multiple issues and just make sure that we're going to be able to support them. Um, this is a crisis accommodation centre in Perth's northern suburbs. Young people come here when they have nowhere else to go. So this was, this was purpose built, we've been running for about 23 years. Um, so I passed away uh, when I was 15, so that, that was the main one. But ever since, before they passed away, since I was 12, I was in and out of foster care. So, yeah, not exactly easy. I just have a lot of like, personal issues really, just like, just had a lot of yeah, family fights and that kind of thing. So that's how I got here. Mm -hmm. No, like, all I would do is just like go at home. I would have smoked weed all day. And that was my life. Could work up home like two in the morning, baked off my tits, and just go to sleep. Do it the next morning. That's not my life. But now that like, I'm here, I'm yeah, get it back on track, kind of thing. Yeah, they've helped me do lots of things. I went through a point where I was homelessness. I had you know, no job, no money, no nothing. Now. I'm getting my life back on track, I'm getting my learner's permit, I'm getting, I'm getting a job, you know, I'm getting all my qualifications done, I'm getting quite a lot done, you know, it's just because of the support and encouragement from the youth workers. Um, specifically, I help young people to find accommodation, so I uh, start off with the basics, so um, getting them on Centrelink payments, uh, finding employment, looking at education. Um, and just helping them with any other barriers. They've always got multiple issues, it's not just one factor. Um, about 80% of young people experiencing a family breakdown is the main reason for them accessing our services. Um, so whether that just be um, domestic violence, family violence, um, if their parents have you know, substance use issues or mental health issues, and then um, the young people themselves having drug and alcohol issues, mental health issues. Drug and alcohol issues is um, a major concern for a lot of our clients um, or it's a concern for their workers, it's something that they identify as a reason why they're um, experiencing homelessness or reoccurring um, crisis or it's a contributing factor so um, giving our clients some support around that is uh, something is, that we see as beneficial. Um, I often call it uh, like being their personal sort of cheerleader where you know you're the person that supports them and encourages them to um, pursue what interests them and become better at what they want to do and and make a better life for themselves um, without becoming personally involved. For young people that are experiencing disadvantage and crisis within their lives, they often don't have the support networks around them that other young people have um, to support them through um, hard times. So it's really important that young people have someone that they can trust, someone that they can talk to, and someone that can assist them with their problems. And that's what youth workers do, and that's what makes them so important. So it's about supporting them to find what they need rather than becoming what they need.
it was really hard with dad being an alcoholic because it, you'd sort of come home you wanted to like spend time with your parents like any kid would sort of think you should feel safe around your parents where I didn't um we then sort of made it worse where it was sexual abuse and stuff like that so yeah that made it pretty hard I told mum and she told me that I'd deserve it and that obviously liked it so yeah it was pretty tough to try and have that on your back. Sarah is now a resident in the foyer program she moved out when she could no longer stand the abuse. Foyer's been really really good for setting me up and building the really basic foundations of independent living so like that means like food shelter water and assistance with paying bills <laughs> This is Jessica. She's a youth worker for an inner city service. As a teenager, she found herself in need of support and came in contact with Step One, an outreach program for at risk youth. Um, over the last 10 years since I first engaged with the Step One bus, I've travelled the world. Um, I have a really nice partner now, I'm Tim, and uh, I, li I live independently in my own you know, accommodation. and Basically, what I want for my future is to be able to set myself up with stable accommodation, income and basically make a house my home. I'm pretty proud of where my life is right now but I think that um, other people that know where my life was then are quite proud as well. Um, the service for me um, was just life changing. Um, it really was. Um, I, it would be a pretty bleak place where I think my life would be if there had been no outreach programs like Step One um, on the streets when I was a teenager. So eventually I can start my own family and to be able to sort of in between that if I can pave the way for other young people to be able to say look I've been where you've been and I believe like in you that you will be able to get to wherever you want to go in life. Um, it doesn't matter where you've come from, it's what you choose to do with that and where you see yourself like going because I think at the end of the day that is what makes a survivor is that saying okay well Yes, that was really, really tough, but hey, I survived it and I'm going to push forward. <laughs>